Is it true that synthetic oils will actually cause harm to the seals in an older engine, causing it to leak engine oil? Today we're gonna find out. We're gonna do a test on a tractor that's 45 years old and has never tasted synthetic oil. So let's put some synthetic oil in that tractor, put it to hard work, and then come back and see if the engine is leaking oil. This is the front of the engine, and as you can see, there aren't any oil leaks. This is a lick from the bottom side looking up. This is the back of the tractor where the engine mounts to the back half of the tractor. As you can see, there isn't any oil leaking. The nuts that hold the engine to the rest of the tractor are very clean. I don't believe this tractor has ever been split in half. I went and cleaned up this oil collection container. We'll be using some of the oil for some testing, so I'm going to collect some oil in this container about midway through the drain cycle. I went and drain the oil that we had in this container into a quart jar that we could use later for testing. I'm going to go ahead and open up this oil filter. When I remove the filter, I crush the filter just a little bit and it's got the filter media trapped inside. So I'm going to have to use a little bit of force to get it out. I'm going to go ahead and cut out the filter media and we'll put it in a press to squeeze all the oil out and then we'll take a closer look at it. All right, that should be pretty good. I think we got most of the oil out of this filter media, so let's take it out and take a look at it. I'll be using the neodymium magnet inside this plastic bag. We're gonna sweep it across the filter media and see if we can pull up any sort of metal. The filter media actually looks pretty clean. I don't see any metal on this magnet. Since the magnet's unable to collect non-ferrous metal and engines use a lot of non-ferrous metal in them, the only way to get a good idea as to whether or not there's a lot of wear taking place inside of an engine is to send the used oil in for an oil analysis to look for both ferrous and non-ferrous metal contamination. Chevrotella T4 promises to provide triple protection. It's supposed to help control wear, deposits, and oil breakdown. This is SAE 15W40 motor oil that's designed for a diesel engine. So what exactly does triple protection mean? Triple protection includes significantly improved resistance to break down under high temperatures. We're gonna test that. Enhanced shear stability performance. Proven aeration control to ensure optimal oil performance. It meets API classification CJ4 and SM. So Shell Rotella T6 is a synthetic that's designed for extreme temperature. It's SAE 5W40, which is slightly lower viscosity than the conventional oil we'll be testing. So T6 claims to provide better fuel economy performance, excellent extreme high and low temperature protection, and engineered to control turbocharger deposits. So the reason I'm comparing T4 against T6 is first off, a lot of people have asked me to compare the two. I've been using T4 instead of T6 in the wintertime, and on those really cold days, that oil light seems to stay on for about eight to 10 seconds. So I believe T6 is gonna float much better, not just because of its viscosity rating, but also because it's a synthetic motor oil. I've already added four quarts of T6. I'm gonna go ahead and add engine restore. I've used it in the last two oil changes and I wanna continue using it just because it's really helped the compression on this old tractor. Before putting the tractor to work, let's do some testing on T4 and T6 to see how they compare. Before we do our testing, let's send the new oils to an oil testing lab and we'll take a look at the results near the end of this video to assess anti-wear additives, detergents and dispersants, and total base number. In the first test, we'll see which oil tolerates the heat the best. Both oils claim excellent protection against heat and that's exactly what we're going to test next. We'll first measure out 200 grams of oil into each of the oil containers, then expose them to 410 degrees Fahrenheit of heat for two hours. I'll rotate the oil containers every 10 minutes just in case one burner is hotter than the other. I'll also monitor the temperatures of both oils throughout the test to make sure that they're very close to the same. Both oils will experience an equal time on each burner. So why this test? High quality oils resist evaporation and thermal breakdown. The NOAC volatility test exposes oil to even 
even more heat than this test to simulate engine operating conditions around the upper piston ring area of an engine. At the end of this test, we'll see exactly how much evaporation has occurred with each type of oil. We'll also be using the cooked oil for two additional tests to see how they perform once they've been exposed to heat. It's been right at two hours. I'm gonna go ahead and take the oil off the burners. And when we come back, we're gonna weigh this oil to see how much evaporative loss occurred with each type of oil. Shell Rotella T4 weighed 404.68 grams before heating it. It now weighs 396.06. That's a loss of 8.62 grams. T6 weighed 430 grams before the test. It now weighs 423.76. That's a loss of 6.24 grams. Since the oil needs to be in the freezer for 24 hours for the cold oil flow test, let's place both new and cooked oils in a freezer that's set to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and we'll come back to this test later in the video. In the next test, we'll be comparing the lubricity or film strength of each product. We'll begin by adding 40 milliliters of oil of each product into the test cups. The test will last right at 10 minutes. After the test, we'll compare the size of the wear scars on each of the bearings to determine if T4 or T6 offers the best protection against engine wear. While the lubricity tester doesn't simulate engine operating conditions perfectly, it'll provide us with some great information. T4 on the left and T6 on the right, it's obvious that both oils have very good anti-wear properties. With that said, T6 definitely won this showdown, showing a little bit better film strength than T4. The oil has been inside the freezer at minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit for nearly 24 hours. New T4 is in lane one, cooked T4 lane two, cooked T6 lane three, and new T6 lane four. And the race is underway with T6 out of the gate very quickly and cooked T6 in a close second. New T4 is in third and cooked T4 is in a distant fourth. T4 has a lot of ground to make up and it's going to have to hurry up if it's going to catch up with T6. T6 is heading down the home stretch in a big hurry while T4 is still trying to get up to speed. This race isn't even close. It's new T6 for the win with Cook T6 two inches behind and new T4 nine and a half inches behind. T6 seems to have better anti-wear properties, handles the heat and cold better, but does it actually cause old seals to leak? Let's go log some hours on this 45 year old tractor and see if it's going to leak some oil.
Okay, I'm not seeing any sort of leaks up front. It looks like the front seal is doing just fine. Okay, the back of the tractor is dry as well, so the rear seal is holding up. The synthetic oil is not causing a leak on this 45 year old tractor. The oil analysis results are in and it's very interesting. According to the oil testing lab, the Rotella T4 is in good condition. The T4 actually had a TBN of 11.4, which is rather impressive. As far as anti-wear additives, the T4 has 1,030 parts per million of phosphorus and 1,133 parts per million of zinc, which is a pretty robust anti-wear package. Its primary detergent and dispersant is calcium at 2,118 parts per million. The T6 additive package looks very close to T4. It has slightly less detergents and dispersants and just a little bit less as far as anti-wear additives. The TBN was only measured at 7.5. I was really surprised. I thought it'd be a little bit higher than that, closer to 11 or 12. As far as the testing lab comments, nothing surprising. The oil looks like it should work well. So does synthetic motor oil cause motor oil leaks in older engines? Well, not in the case of my 45 year old tractor, but that's a sample size of one. I'd really like to know your opinion. Have you had synthetic motor oil cause a leak or have you seen it happen in someone else's vehicle? If so, what's your opinion on the cause? I really enjoy reading your comments on future video ideas. Thanks again for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.